this morning, and I'm going to preach a, a little bit different than I did last Sunday. Um, uh, let's see who's smart and spiritual and got a good memory. Who, who can tell me, raise your hand if you know what I preached on last Sunday morning. There's one, two, three, four, all right, they're coming up. What was it? About the woman, the woman that came to the Lord, uh, the woman, the, and she got, got one, didn't take no for an answer. So uh, this morning, going to do a little something different, and uh, we'll start with James chapter 4 and verse 14. Look at it very carefully. This verse, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, like we'd say tomorrow, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, right? Nobody here knows what you'll be doing tomorrow. You know what you'd like to be or plan to be or hope you will, but you don't know that. Now look at this. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Right there in the middle of that verse, it said, that's the title of my sermon. For what is your life? That's what I'm preaching on today. What is your life? All the scientists and philosophers and wise men down through the centuries have tried to come up with a definition of what life is. Um, and they've tried. I'm going to give it to you today. I'm not a scientist or a philosopher or a little bit of one, I guess. But uh, I'm going to tell you what, according to the Bible, what your life is. You are alive, right? If you're alive, nod your head, say amen. amen. I wonder about some people sometimes. Uh, they're like they're in a coma. Uh, but uh, you are in. You are alive, right? They, a famous Nehru of India many years ago visited the United States. And they said, where do you want to go? He said, I want to meet Einstein when Einstein was alive. Smartest man that's ever been in this world, they say. Uh, you know, Einstein was supposed to have been the smartest man. You know what his contribution to our society was? The atom bomb. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, he, he wanted to visit Einstein. And when he got to see Einstein, they took him to him. And he, here's, he said, I want to ask you one question, Einstein. What's the meaning of life? And Einstein said, I have not figured it out what the meaning of life is. He didn't know. Now, there's different definitions of life. I'll give you some. Somebody defined life, union of body and soul. Uh, that's pretty good. Somebody said it's the state of being alive, you know, okay? Uh, somebody else said it's the period between birth and death. Uh, that's not true. Life actually starts before you're born, when you're in your mother's womb. Uh, somebody else said there's a, it's a property that involves growth, Respiration and reproduction, maybe. A loan, a trust from God, uh, a little bit, uh, but it's uh, intangible. You can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it, you can't bargain with it. It's flimsy. It's here today, gone tomorrow. But there's one thing for sure. According to the Bible, it's short. Life is short. And the two best words for understanding your King James Bible are the words like and as. The, if you're a teacher, you know how to teach. Uh, talk, teach how the Lord taught. And the Lord taught by repetition and the Lord taught by comparison. He'd say the kingdom of heaven is like. Say, so you know what the kingdom of heaven is like? No, nope, sure don't. Well, you know what that is? Yep. You know what a mustard seed is? Yeah. You know what a fig tree is? Yeah. Okay, it's like that. So like and as. Anytime you see the word like, or as, in the Bible, you can learn something he's teaching you. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you in the Bible, there are seven things that your life is like. All seven of these things apply to your life. Now you may be here this morning, and you say, well, Brother Danny, I'm old, I'm about ready to kick the bucket and, and, and leave this place. And you may feel like that. And then there's others, y'all, here this morning. You think, I'm young and healthy and strong. I, nothing can take me down. I'm not scared of anything. Uh, I, I, you, you, you're, in, you're not right. You're not right. You ain't thinking right. And uh, you, you listen to, uh, to what I'm going to tell you what your life is like. Number one, as this verse said here, your life is like a vapor. 
your life is like a vapor. The Bible said there in verse 14, it's like a vapor that appears for a little while and then man says, what's a vapor? It's steam, fog, uh, uh, fog. Uh, if all we knew about water was steam, we wouldn't know much. You go out in the morning and see the, the, see the, the fog and it, you think, oh boy, it sure is foggy outside. Go in the house, uh, eat breakfast, whatever, come back out, it's gone. I know there's a lot of times when I'm coming down, uh, down here, down Interstate 40 from, from uh, Nebo, you get about the county line down there and you start getting closer to Morgan. And I don't know if it's my imagination or what, but it seems like that it's always foggy in the morning down around exit 103, 104, 105, all the time, just like big old heavy fog. And it's even, you, it like, looks like it's going to rain. And it's a be- beautiful, sunshiny day. And I'll be, you think, Lord have mercy, uh, or it's awful foggy foggy down here and by the time you get down here and turn around it's gone that's where your life is you think boy here it is here it is now listen y'all I'm talking about your life you think well here I am I'm in church today I'm going to do this I'm going to you're going to look around one day and it's going to be gone it's going to be gone I mean uh, I remember growing up I remember how slow it went I mean, um, my sister sitting back there in the very back, she's, she can tell you when I was, I wanted it time to go, but I wanted to be 14, 15. When I, all I couldn't think of would be 16. I could not wait for my 16th birthday. I thought I was going to die before I got 16. I thought 14 and 15 was 10 years each. I, and on my 16th birthday, I, said, I made my mom take me down to the DMV, and I got my driver's license. And then as soon as I was that, I want to be 18. You know, because you get to do stuff when you're 18 that you can't when you're 16. And I remember going there, you know, your life's like seven, eight, nine. Oh, that was awful years, ain't they? Ten, running around in the yard trying to kill a snake, shooting a bow and arrow, uh, playing, playing baseball. Eleven. Twelve, you know, you finally go through all them years. Don't make me go through all that much for every single year. Uh, uh, if it, and you get 16. And then it's 17. Then it's 18. Then 19. Doing better. 20. 21. 22. 23. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 40. Some of y'all don't even remember your 40s. Tell me one thing you've done in your, you can't, can you? Whoa, am I 50? Here's 50. And some of you are running like the road runner. You've done just about, you about finished up. That's how fast you're, you're, it's like, you see it here one second, gone. Tell them, old people. Tell all these little bri- angels sitting up here this morning. Tell all these precious teenagers sitting up here with a bright, shining future, whatever. Uh, tell, uh, tell all of them that, that you're going to turn around one day. You know what midlife crisis is? Midlife crisis is when, you, when you're about 40 and you look around and say, Lord, I ain't done nothing. You had these big dreams and you was going to do this and that and you flopped out somewhere or another and, and then first thing you know, you you say, oh, you can't do nothing. They say, youth is heat without light. And old age is light without heat. What a joke, man. That's, that's, that's what it is. It's, uh, it's not even funny if you don't know the Lord. It's like a vapor. And the older you get, the faster time goes. Number two, your Bible says your life is like a journey. In Genesis 47, 9, Jacob said, the days of my years of my pilgrimage were 130 years. Few and evil have the days of my life been. Your life is like a journey. You're on a journey. Whether you like it or not, you are on a journey. You are traveling from the cradle to the grave. You're just passing through Morganton this morning. You're just passing through Shining Light Baptist Church. You are on your journey. Have you ever took a journey? It begins at, at birth and ends at death. Some people's journey's long. Some people are very, very, very short. It's like when you go to, if you're going to Florida and I can, you can drive from here to Jacksonville and uh, around 
six and a half hours if you don't stop. Uh, they'll say seven uh, from here to Jacksonville, a little over seven hours. And, you know, when you start out, have you ever, have you ever noticed uh, when you, you take a trip, you say, well, I'm going to take this book and I'm going to read it on my vacation and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And I'm, you plan out all these things and you're going to listen to this CD and this singing group and this preaching sermon and you're going to do this and that and, and you got it all planned out. Hey, you take her down there. I'm, I'm just going to enjoy the scenery here and I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that CD in a little bit. And if you're in South Carolina and then the next thing you know, you're coming across the Georgia line and then when you cross the Georgia line, you're going down Interstate 95 and you're going down through there. You know, it ain't long. Uh, you, you, when you leave here, you think, oh, Lord, I'd read this. But it, it's not long Do you start seeing signs. Uh, Florida State Line, Jacksonville, uh, 280 miles or, or, or something like that. Uh, what's your first Jacksonville sign, Einstein? 146. See that? I don't know. Maybe if he knew his Bible that good, he'd be dangerous, wouldn't he? <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, he knows all the exits from here uh, to Florida and back. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, they uh, if, you know, how, how many of you have ever felt that you think, oh my goodness, we're almost there. We're almost there. That's the way life is. He said, the years of my pilgrimage. And that dude lived 130 years, people. 130. You think, boy, after 130, I'll be ready to die. No, not if you're healthy, you won't. You'll be, you'll be just like you are now. You'll want to live just as much when you're 80 as you do now. I'll be, ah, if I can just make 70, I'll be happy. No, you won't. When you're 70, you'll have just as much a desire to live as you do at 30 or 40 or 50. That's right. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's a trip. No matter how long you live, your life seems short. Uh, you better know where you're going. You better know where you're leaving. Brother Bobby there, I mean, he, he had, we had no idea when he was up here giving his testimony uh, three or four weeks ago that today he would be in eternity with the Lord and he'd be home with the Lord. We don't know. Here today, gone tomorrow. Are you ready? He made things right with God. Do you know if this was your last day? Preacher, it's not my last day. I'm healthy. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. Unhealthy people, healthy people, they're leaving this world at a, at a rate of like two per second. Bam, 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 bam. And you're just standing in line waiting on your turn. It's like a journey. Let me show you a third one right quickly this morning. Psalm 73, 20. Your life is like a dream. Life is like a dream. Don't look for this in the science books, not in there, or philosophy or history. Psalm 73, 20, it said, we spend our years as a dream when one awakeneth. I've heard people say, boy, I, have you ever said this? People say, I dreamed all night last night. Now, I know that feeling because I, I dream every night. I dream crazy stuff, buddy. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I, I dream I stuff, every night I dream. I don't even know what it's like to sleep all night long without waking up. Uh, but uh, uh, I dream. And you know what they tell us? They say that your dreams are really only like five seconds or something like that. <laughs> and and in, in your dream, it feels like you're, you're fighting to get somewhere. Or you're going through the jungle. You know, you're, you're trying to climb up a hill or something like that. And as they say, it's only a few seconds. And when you wake, oh, my goodness, I was dreaming. I was dreaming. And you didn't know when you was dreaming, you didn't know you was dreaming. Have you ever dreamed you was having a dream? Probably not. So you, 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 when you're dreaming, you don't know you're dreaming. You think, well, I'm here, I'm, I'm shooting a, a tiger, or, you, know, or I'm, you know, or you eat too much pizza, you know, and you're dreaming about your, your mom-in-law moved in with you or something, uh, you know, and you're having nightmares, and you're, and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm fighting this demons and, and, the, and the devil. And then all of a sudden you wake up. Well, it was a dream. That's where your life is. You'll be driving down the road one day, it's very possible. You'll be driving down the road one day and, all, and, and you're worried about your bills and worried about your troubles and worried about all your burdens and you're worried about your kids and you're worried about your husband and you're worried about your, and what am I going to do? And Lord, am I sick? And am I doctor appointment? And, all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden somebody will hit you on the wrong side of the road. You wake up and there's the Lord. It was a dream. I'm in heaven. I'm awake now. See, that's the way life is. It's short, like a dream. You better get on the ball. You better get on the ball. 
How many times you plan something and say, well, I didn't have time to do this. I didn't have time to do that. I didn't have time. You got time to do everything God wants you to do. I know, I mean, I say that too. But you know, the truth is, we better use our time a little bit better than what many of us are using it. Uh, I like the old song that said, when I come to the end of life journey, and uh, perhaps we'll never meet anymore. I'm eating on the other side, brother. We're going to another world. You realize when a dream is over and you just woke up, you, can you imagine being in this world Living like somebody like uh, Jeffrey Epstein or whoever that guy's name was, and and uh, you imagine somebody that was living like the devil and all of that, and living out in sin, partying in Hollywood, and all of a sudden took some uh, dope and overdosed or something, and then woke up in hell, and they realized their forty years in Hollywood was nothing, gone, it's over, your life's like a dream. Number four. Your life's like a shadow. That's what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes 6.12. Who knoweth what is good for a man? All the days of his vain life he spendeth as a shadow. A shadow. i got one here I'm somewhere. Here. There's my. Uh, a shadow is an uh, imitation of the real thing. There it is right there. That, that shadow can't hurt you. The shadow's not real. It's just a reflection of reality. Your life is like a shadow, like a shadow. I see my shadow there. It's, 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 it's really worthless as far as doing anything or helping anything. What is good for a man is in his vain life is spent as a shadow. You can't recognize a person by their shadow. Some shadows are short. Some shadows are long. Some shadows are deceiving. You never know uh, who it is or what it is. And that's the way life is. But number five, let me show you another one. We spend our life also as a tale that is told. I'm giving you all what the Bible says about your life. You ain't going to get this in the science book. Psalm 90 and verse 9. All our days are passed away in wrath. We spend our years as, remember that word, a tale that is told. You ever heard people say, uh, boy, I'm going to sit out there and listen to my grandpa tell them tales. You know what I'm talking about, right? Tell stories of the old days, tell stories. Of, that's what your life is. Your life is a tale that is told. Uh, then when we be having uh, Brother Bobby's funeral here in a, in a couple of days, if it's the Lord's will, I'll be, I'll be telling some things about his life and his family. We'll be remembering some things about his life. And Brother Bobby was a, a, a great man that loved the Lord. And, you know, uh, all those years that he lived will be condensed into those, just those few minutes there I'm talking about. You, th- you think about it. Have you ever told your kids a story? That's what life is. I tell Frank stories. I don't know where he's at this morning. He's he back yonder somewhere. I tell Frankie, I had him in here with me a minute ago. Sometimes I get him down at night, and I'll say, you want me to tell you a story, Frankie? He'll say, yeah. I told all my girls stories growing up, and I, most of the time I just made them up as I went along. And uh, I had a cucumber growing out of their ear or something, you know, and, and somebody, you know, just come crazy, something like that. And they are like, <laughs> I was about that big around. And I tell Frankie, I said, Frankie, guess what's up in the woods? He covers his head up like he I say, that big old cow. Big cow. Oh, he's ugly. And he goes, Mah. and he goes, and I said, you know what that cow wants? I said, he wants chocolate milk. And I said, we're well, going to give that cow some chocolate milk? And he said, yeah. So and then I go on and on with the story. And you know what? In a minute, I say, okay, now it's time to go sleep. Time to go sleep. He tell mommy, time to go sleep. And he'll say, tell me another story. Tell me another story. I want, he don't, he wants, how many of you have had that problem with your kids? You tell them a story, now shut up and go to sleep. And they, they, I want to hear another story. I want to hear another story. I want to hear another story. Anybody ever had that happen with your kids? You can't tell too many stories for them. I mean, it, it could go on all night. It's a tale that is told. But finally, you got to say, now look, you got to go to sleep. You gotta go sleep. You hear me? You you gotta go sleep, Frankie. It's time to go sleep. Go night night, and uh, I, I'll go out and, and and let him let him go to sleep. And did you know what? No matter how many stories you tell them, they weren't here. That's where your life is. Your life. You started out in this world. When you came into this world, man, 
you're just a little bitty thing about that long. You grind, then you wind up learning how to talk and walk and everything. And you go through this. What, what has happened, y'all? What has happened to you? Look at yourself this morning. Look at you, and I'm not talking about physically. Look at your life. You spin it as a tale that's told. When you, if you was getting ready to die this morning, you'd say, wait, I want another story. Lord, let, let me a little bit longer. Tell me another one. Lord, let me do it. That's how your life is. It's a tale that is told. I realize standing in front of you this morning, I'm not always going to be here. And people say, oh, Brother Danny, I don't know what I'll do without you. Well, you're fixing to find out one of these days. You better have your faith in the Lord and, and your heart right. And you, know, you better, you better, because I'm not always going to be here. Your mom and daddy's not going to be here, and you're not always going to be here. Get it through your head. They need to teach that in college. Every college student, freshman year, should be taught death 101. Look, you're going to die. Funny they won't mention that, isn't it? You know why? They're in, they're in denial. They're, they're immature, uh, a little bit, that are in denial and don't want people to face the real issue. They're all going to die, right? How come we won't prepare them for it? You know why? Because when they start talking about death, it brings up the question of the hereafter, and the hereafter brings up the question of God, and they don't want to deal with that. That's religion. No, it's not. It's not religion. It's facing facts. Your life is like a tale that is told. You ever remember, you ever remember growing up, you used to watch a movie, and the movie would start, and it would start with a little kid, and you'd see the little kid grow up and get, go, get married and have kids, and then, and then they die at the end. All that's in two hours. They're born, they die in two hours. That's what your life is. It's a tale that is told. And when you die, there are going to be people say, well, I remember he done this, and I remember he done that. Condense that into about a couple of hours. You're winning souls. If you ain't fishing, you ain't following. If you're not actively trying to keep people out of hell, you're not following the Lord. You heard me, didn't you? He said, come out to me, and I will make you fishers of men. You say, well, I don't do this, I don't do that. Yeah, but you're just wasting your life. Get somebody saved and take them to heaven with you. Listen, let me show you another one. Look at here. Your life is like water spilt on the ground. That's what it says. 2 Samuel 14, for we must needs die and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. That means if you spill water on the ground, you cannot get it up. It goes down in the ground. It spreads out. It is impossible. If I had this right here. Now, if I spill it here, you might could get, you might could get most of it up. If I spill, if I spill on that carpet, you won't. Look here. I spill water. There ain't no way you can get all that up. Impossible. You cannot. That's your life. That's your life. When it's spilt, it's spilt, and you can't get it back. And I'm going to tell you something. You can't go back and live life over again. You can't call things back. You teenagers, you know what y'all are told to do today? You young people, here's what the world tells you. Go out and try it. You're only young once. Have all the fun you can go. Get drunk, party, get high, uh, shack up, uh, uh, try this, try that. That's the dumbest advice anybody could possibly give you. That's the dumbest thing. You don't have to try every filthy, rotten thing. You're going to wish you could take it back one day, and you can't. You better off do right. You better off to do right. Your life's like waters. That's your life right there. It's water spilled on the ground. It ain't coming back. And I want to say this morning, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people that would give anything in this world if they could call back time. Listen, there's millionaires in Hollywood this morning with millions of dollars in the bank would give you $10 million cash if you could roll back the clock 20 years. It's impossible. You can't roll back this day. You can't call back yesterday. It's in the books. It's already on your books. That water's spilt. Your life is like water spilt on the ground. There's an old lady one time years ago when people used to travel by train. They said, this old woman, she traveled and traveled and traveled and, and, and she's going somewhere. 
and she went down to the train station to get on the train and she got on there and she was grabbing her pocketbooks and her bags and, and she couldn't get up, up the steps and she's fussing and grabbing this and, come, and finally got to her seat and set her book down and hung her pocketbook over here and fixed her skirt and messed around there and, and, and fussed and griped and asked a bunch of questions and, and I don't like this and it's too hot in here and, why and they stopped and said, announced her destination. And she got out of that thing and she grabbed her stuff and she started going down there. She said, well, if I'd have known we'd have got here this quick, I wouldn't have wasted my time of fussing. <laughs> and guess what? I know a lot of church people. Yeah. I know a lot of church people. You're going to be going along one day and you're bam, there's the Lord. Whoa. If I'd known we'd got here this quick, I wouldn't have wasted my time fussing, Lord. Half the time you fuss, you're just wasting time. What y'all fuss about? I remember you say, me and my husband, we fuss all the time and everything. And 99% of it, you can't even remember it next week. Life's too short to argue and complain and gripe and bellyache. Listen, you're going to see the Lord and you're going to say, if I knew we'd have got here this quick, I wouldn't have wasted my time fussing, Lord. And you say, well, I told you. I told you it's like, like water spilled on the ground. I told you. D.L. Moody, many years ago, he, he, uh, he said, uh, uh, they were told about some sightseers that traveled to England. And you couldn't, it wasn't cell phone, email, and all that stuff back then. And uh, he said these people come to go sightseeing in England when he was there. And a bunch of these ladies came and they arrived at this hotel and they was wanting to check in the hotel and they were told, sorry, we're all booked up. The motel is full. And all of them started walking off, going to find somewhere else. And one lady stayed there. And they said, what are you doing? She said, I'm staying. And they said, why? She said, well, I'm, I'm going to stay here. I'm not going anywhere. They said, well, you, you heard them say it was full. She said, oh, I made my, I made my reservations days ago. They got me down. I'm, I'm on the books, and I'm going in. And you know, there's going to be a lot of people standing before God one of these days, and the, and the Lord's going to say, hey, full. But Lord, what about, what about me? You didn't make, you got to make your reservations ahead of time. You have to make your reservations like today. You got to do it ahead of time. You can't, well, you die and then try to get in God's hotel. You can't wait till you die and then say, all right, Lord, don't I get in? Nope. You have to make your reservation before you leave this world. All of those Catholic prayers for dead people are absolute waste of words and time. You don't pray for somebody after they're dead. That ain't gonna do no good. Uh, most of the ones that live for living ain't doing them no good. Uh, listen, people, you hear me today? You make those reservations before you leave. Number seven. You know what your life's like? I already told you now. Your life's like a vapor. You're going to be here alone. Your life's like a journey. You're going to be there quick. Your life's like a dream, just like that. Your life's like a shadow. Your life's like a tale that is told. Your life is like water spill on the ground. The last thing your life is like is like a flower that blooms. That's what the Bible says. In Job 14, 1, it said, Man that is born of a woman is few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower that is cut down. You ever seen a flower bloom? You ever just been riding down the interstate one day and you thought, oh, I love them, them pretty, man, you go over there to Gatlinburg and place like that, I mean, I really must be getting old because I'm starting to like flowers. I used to didn't even notice flowers. <laughs> My mom would say, they've got the prettiest flowers in their garden. I've never even seen a flower, I don't think, the last 40 or 50. <laughs> I'm, and all of a sudden now I'm starting to say, man, them's pretty. You see all them yellow ones out there on the side of the interstate? I used to think of something wrong with a man that likes flowers. Uh, that's a, that sounds a little weird. But you know, I like to see all those color because I like color. The brighter the better, brother. Them big bright yellow ones, blue ones, orange, purple. And you think, where'd them come from? They wasn't even here the other day. And then you say, boy, I want to show you these pretty flowers up here I seen the other day. They're gone. Cut down. One of them guys that works for the state mower, or they just wielded. Some of them are cut down quick, right when they're in full bloom. Others, like people, sort of just wither up, man. You look like a prune before too long. You just get worse and worse. Ain't that right? 
you're starting to look a little prunish this morning. Some of us, a little prunish. I like one lady said, that little girl, she's putting on makeup and she's trying, on, and she's trying to make her cheeks red. And, and she, she, they said, honey, you don't need no makeup. Little bitty girls don't need makeup. Now the older you get, you know, all the help you can get, right? I mean, I mean, got ditches in there, man. You get you a trowel. <laughs> I mean, it just gives it worse. You say, Lord, I used to get to use that much. Now it takes a cup, a handful, a bowl, cup full, a bucket full. You know what it is? You're a flower. You bloom, you fade, you're gone. Man that is born of a woman is a few days. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. Some are cut down in youth. Some just gradually fade away. I will tell you this story. Years ago in this country, when I was growing up, some of older folks in here will know who I'm talking about. A little girl came up on the scene and they put this little girl in, in plays and performing when she was two and a half. And at 10 years old, she started going, being in movies. Her name was um, uh, you, you, you called her. Or her name was Frances Gum, G-U-M-M. Her stage name was Judy Garland. And Judy Garland well, it played in one of the most famous movies way back yonder in the early 1900s, or 30 or whenever that thing come out, that the world's ever seen. And the name of it was what, y'all? Wizard of Oz. When we was little, I asked my sister back there. She, we used to, the Wizard of Oz come on one time a year. Remember that? Man, we was sitting there. and we were, I, it, it's just, I, don't, I didn't know if I liked it or not. It made me feel weird. I was scared. Oh, gosh. Trees are talking. Demons and witches. <laughs> that was the scariest thing we seen back when we was growing up. Lord, you, you kids now, your mind's so twisted and perverted and ain't nothing bothers you no more. But we'd sit there and there's old, old that one. Man, she'd come in there and I go, oh my goodness. And I watched it every year and I thought, she's gonna get her this time. And Dorothy, as she was called in the movie, she was a, a pretty little talented little girl. Ten years old. And they said her mother pushed her and pushed her. Another one of those tragic Hollywood stories you hear about. Her mother pushed her and pushed her. They gave her drugs to help her sleep when she was ten years old. A ten-year-old kid, unless there's some kind of physical complication, don't need no drugs. That's what they do with every kid in the country nowadays. At least a little thing. They misbehave, put them on drugs. Uh, they can't pay attention, put them on drugs. They, they put us on drugs and it didn't even cost nothing. Bam! We straighten up just like that. But anyway, she come down and every little girl in America would watch that and say, I'd give anything to be in her shoes. Oh my goodness. Look at her. Her little red cheeks, her little weeds or whatever that was, <laughs> yeah, them ponytails or something. And she come down there and she said, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I've heard of once in a lullaby. And all the little girls go, ah. And I hated that part. I love them. Like, Shoo, let's get this over with. That's the only thing I didn't like about it, all that singing. Here they go on another song. I want to see the witch get killed. The house fall on her head. <laughs> all sticking out to her feet. And it was scarier in black and white. They made it color and it wasn't hardly as good anymore. And it was scary when it was black and white. But you know what? At 13 years old, she signed her first contract. 20, she had been in one of the most famous movies in Hollywood. Her mother pushed her and pushed her. She was mean and jealous. Had her own pills at 10 years of age. She stayed hungry and insecure because they wouldn't let her eat because they didn't. They wanted her to keep that stage camera figure. You gotta be 
you got to be skinnier than you want to look on camera because camera makes you look bigger. And they like starved the poor kid to death. Bus kids got it, had it better than that girl. She died and she had $20 million in the bank. That's a lot of money back in, 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 the, in, the, in the 60s. Her love life and personal life was terrible. She had, she, they put her on amphetamines to keep her energetic during the daytime and sleeping pills at night. They give you sleep pills to make you slow down, stop, and then pills to get you up going the next day. Worked 18 hours a day in those Hollywood studios six days a week. Her mother was mean, working 18 hours a day. And yet all the kids in America thought, wow, I'd give anything. That's the American dream. I'd love to be in her shoes. I love it. it ain't like that, y'all. It wasn't like that. At 19 years old, she got married for the first time, five altogether. Her and her husband didn't stay together but about three or four years. She married another guy really quick. He turned out to be homosexual. Love the man. This is way back yonder, late 50s. She divorced him, married a third man in Hollywood. He turned out to like men and he took off. At 19, had an abortion. Her, her kids said she had mood swings where she'd be really, really happy one minute and really, really sad the next minute. Just like you know, all these people that's on these legal drugs do. They're either laughing, happy, talking, can't shut up, or they're just like that. Not enough love and attention in the world for her, her son said. She said, there ain't enough attention in the world for my mom. She attempted suicide nearly 20 times. And her husband found her, self-mutilated, tried to cut herself. That's a sign of demon possession. Anytime somebody cuts herself, it's a sign of demon spirits are messing with them. It ain't to relieve, it's not to relieve stress, it's to get this demon to leave me alone. A stress is a demonic spirit. That stress is, not all. But they found her in the bathroom dead where she'd overdosed. 47, she just turned 47. You know what her life was, y'all? It was a waste. And that sweet little child that sung in that movie, if she didn't get saved, died and went to hell and is screaming in hell this morning. If she didn't get saved, maybe she did. I hope, pray to God she did. But she lived that little, people looked at her and they thought, oh, look at that little dress. Look at them little bows in her hair. Look at the innocence on her face. She had a nervous breakdown. She's bipolar. I wonder what she's thinking. Those last few days of her life, it wasn't somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops. Remember that? Up high above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me. That ain't where she went. She didn't go over the rainbow. Her dreams didn't come true. Her life was spent just like that, and so will yours. Now, the truth is this morning, there's not a person here today, not a person here today that knows you're going to be alive we come back to church this evening. Your water that is spilt. Your tale that is told. Your dream for a few seconds. Gone. What is your life? Somebody said it right. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eyes closed this morning. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. Come on, Miss Desi, she's going to play something softly. Bow your head, close your eyes, please. No one talking, no one moving. If you hear this morning, you say, Preacher, Brother Danny, it hit me this morning that my life is not, it's not, it's not, it's fragile. 
It's fragile. It can end any day. And my question is, number one, do you know for a fact that you're saved? You say, well, I went to Bible school when I was little. And I, no, 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 I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about has there come a point in your life when you took the Lord Jesus Christ and Him only as your Savior from hell fire? Why don't you do that today? We're in, we're in social distancing, but there's still plenty of room here at the altar if you want to come. Maybe there's somebody here this morning. There's a teenager. There's a young person. There's a mom or a dad. Say, preacher, you know what? I just realized how short my life is, and I'm going to get on the ball. I'm going to get down to business. I'm going to do some visiting. I'm going to give out some tracts. I'm going to witness. I'm going to be faithful to church. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to give. I'm going to pray. I, life's short, y'all. Life is short. God's been good to you. Some are coming. Others are coming. Let's just get around this crowd around this altar. Meet me here this morning, and let's pray before we leave. Pray that God will help us to use what little bit of time we got left, whatever that might be, for the glory of God. Will you do that this morning? Will you do that this morning? The Lord will help you if you'll let him. The Lord will help you if you'll let him. You just come and say, Lord, I want my life to count. I want to get in the bus ministry. As soon as we can get them buses rolling, roll them, roll them, Lord. I want to roll them for the glory of God. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you do it? Just come on right now. Come on right now. Let's just get in here this morning and say, Preacher, I want to, I want to do right. I want to get on fire for God. The Lord will bless you for it. The Lord will bless you for it. Will you do it? All right, all right. Now, you pray in your heart right now. You pray in your heart right now. Ready? Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help every single person here this morning. Lord, to face the facts that we're not always going to be here. I don't know. I don't know if my life may end today. I don't know that. And Lord, that's not being negative or doom and gloom. Lord, it's the truth. And you told us over and over and over in your word how short life is. I pray that you'd help every single person here this morning. Those that are watching online, I pray that you'd reach out there and touch people's hearts and lives. Those that are watching on YouTube and on Facebook, God, I pray that you'd bless them and touch them. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd help every one of us to live every day like it's our last. Help us to work like we're going to live forever and live like we're going to die tonight. God will thank you for it. I pray for that one this morning who's been struggling, who's fighting a hard battle. Lord God, give them victory. Lord, help them to live right, serve you, and do the right thing. Have you in our heart. Bless this church. Bless our revival coming up. God, do a great and mighty work, and we'll thank you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All hearts clear.